Okay, welcome to the next figure review. This one is, of course, Dr. Engine. Um, if, any, if any of you are familiar with my channel, you will know that Dr. Engine is my absolute favourite character, and therefore, rightly, uh, this is my favourite action figure. Um, when I actually first saw this action figure, I was, I was quite young, and I was just searching on Google Images for Engine, and I, I, found, I found the tiniest image of this action figure, and I, I knew I had to have it, and then I, I ended up finding one on eBay quite cheap. Um, despite the fact this engine figure has been stored in the same way as all my other action figures, um, his box has unfortunately turned yellow, which is really annoying for me. Um, and you can see it's kind of busted on this side, so he's kind of tilting open. Um, but like I say, I got all my action figures second hand, and um, this box is open, which is why it's kind of tilted like this. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the box. So it's a Series 2 figure, so we've got this Series 2 decal. As I said, the box has been opened, so some of the, the print has come off with the glue. Um, then you can see Dr. Engine sitting in here with his missile, him, his board, all his accessories. Um, and as I said on the Series 1 box, the, the problem of, uh, of the cardboard coming off has actually been rectified in the fact the cardboard is actually inside the plastic this time. Um, and Engine doesn't come with any stickers or anything or any crates. So... Um, to open this up, um, I tried to make it almost like a hinge so that the front would come off, but that this side would still be stuck down. So to kind of demonstrate that better, so that uh, this side is kind of stuck down. Now if you move it a lot, then this will obviously come unstuck, but I do recommend anyone who's sort of opening action figures, if you want them to, if you want to keep the box, do it on a hinge like this, and then you can slide your action figure out, and the box will kind of just fall back into place. And you're not likely to lose the front piece. Okay, so in here um, we have all the accessories. Now the gun was, was taped down and, and so was the gem here. Around engine there would have been one of these ties holding him in place. This is actually the original tie, but uh, he's not tied up right now. So here's the box. That's what it looks like without engine inside it. Um, this cardboard is actually on the inside, as I said. It's uh, on the inside of the box. On the back then we have a bit more of an interesting uh, array of action figures here. So there's also, uh, the Series 1 is advertised here. We've also got other action figures advertised here. Speed Racer, 10th, uh, I'm not sure what that was, and Gex. Um, and obviously we know that the Gex line unfortunately didn't actually come out. Um, so you have really vibrant and interesting uh, images here of the, of the other action figures. So... Um, these are actually all the prototype figures that they've taken photos of. So they have really, really good detail on them, really beautiful paintwork, which actually isn't reflected when you buy the figure. So Entropy, he's got this blue clock. Obviously, we know he doesn't have that. Dingo has got studs, uh, much thicker studs around uh, the, gr the, the really green, vibrant green uh, canister he has on his back. Engine looks like he's looking up a bit more. His mouth is way wider and he, he his missile is grey. He has a very shiny face. And it looks like he's holding his gun pretty well. You know, there are all these subtle differences in these action figures that you'll notice only when you collect them all. Uh, but Series 2, Entropy, Dingadol, Deep Dive, uh, Crash Bandicoot, Dr. Engine, the Moto Crash and Coco Duo Pack, which is this one here, uh, High Flying Crash, and of course Wave Rider Coco Bandicoot. And um, this uh, this was obviously uh, released in 1999. And obviously it's made in China. And I did ask Andy Gavin why the figures are so fragile. And he said, well, it was just a cheap uh, production line in China that made them. So that's why. It says, include star sled and ray gun for Dr. Engine. So this is actually a star sled. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for the box. <laughs> Okay, so once the box is open, let's look at the kind of things we get in there. So, we get this rather interesting stand for Dr. Engine. So it's almost like uh, like his version of, of a jet board, like Cortex has a jet board, and this is Engine's kind of jet board. Um, it's, it's something that's never actually seen in the game, but it's obviously something they've added to the action figure just to give it sort of a more interesting platform to stand on, I suppose. Uh, sorry for the for the focusing. I'm trying to focus in on this detail. It's got quite a lot of really nice detail on it, even um, on the underside, uh, where where you, where you wouldn't really see. 
It's got all these bolts on it and uh, it's kind of got this orange, black and blue colour scheme with green as well. And it almost looks like a face on the front has been painted on with those green eyes there. And it actually looks rather menacing. It's got all these fins and stuff. So the next thing we get is this orange gem. Um, for some reason, all of the gems come with these bubbles, these like these bubbles inside, which is kind of irritating because it doesn't look quite gem-like with a big plastic bubble in the middle. Um, but that's the orange gem that comes with engine. Um, one thing about these these gems, I think, and and some of the crystals as well, you can see where they've kind of been cut out of a mold or something. They've got kind of rough edges in places, and obviously they have that that bubble in the middle. But anyway, so that's that. Then we have the engine figure himself, and uh, he comes in the box without a missile in his head, so you can kind of see inside his head. And they didn't have to, but they actually put a few little, you know, scratches in there, maybe like make it more interesting. Um, we'll get onto the actual figure of engine in a moment, but as you can see, it's a really nice engine figure. So he stands. He goes on to stand like this. There's two pegs, one foot in there and then one there, and there he's standing up. The next thing that comes is Engine's Missile. Um, you may notice that this isn't exactly following the colour scheme uh, from the game, or in fact the design from the game. It's actually quite a different kind of missile. But it's got this yellow nose cone with a little red tip on the end. Uh, it's got a black base with burgundy and yellow check. The wings are black, uh, the I don't know what you'd call this. The funnel, the exhaust is black, and the top is is uh, got like a red kind of paint there. As you can see, as I said with the gems, there's not such great finishing on, on these objects. As you can see, there's like a weird scuff there where it's been cut out of a mold, and also on the bottom, just around this tip, if I can get it to focus, just there, there's also a weird rough cut. Um, but yeah, that's the missile. And basically, you, you slot this into engine's head. It is a bit of a... Uh, well, it's a good fit, but you have to kind of push it down, otherwise it will just pop back out. And finally, for engine, we have a ray gun. Which, again, engine was never seen with a ray gun, but I'm guessing this is just to sort of keep his accessories pack sort of up to sort of Cortex standard, where Cortex had a gun and Cortex had a, uh, you know, a, a hoverboard. Kind of a weird-looking gun. Because of the way it's packaged the the barrel of the gun bends up like that so really it should it should be more straight like this but it's kind of a soft rubbery kind of plastic um and i, I do have a lot of difficulty getting this in engine's hand actually so i'm just going to pop it down there for now so that's the figure with all of his accessories he's got a jet board himself a gun a gem and his missile now let's talk about the actual engine figure himself so this figure is a bit more detailed than Crash Bandicoot. Um, as you can see, he's got all this hair detail at the top. It's really nicely carved out. And then he's even got his shorter trimmed hair around the back, which kind of gives it uh, like a 3D, more realistic feel, really, um, to his hair. Uh, the metal part of his face, then, unlike in the games, features a, a bunch of kind of panels and bolts holding his head together. Uh, it makes logical sense. It's, these figures are a lot more detailed than their on-screen counterparts. So it makes sense that they add all of this kind of interesting uh, design to engine. Now you may notice three very obvious things about the metal side of his face. One of them being the fact that his chin is actually made of metal on this figure, uh, which is which was not a thing. And engine did not have a metal chin then. He only got his metal chin in the Wrath of Cortex. Which leads me to believe that this engine figure is what inspired the design for the Wrath of Cortex engine. If you look at this one and then the Wrath of Cortex engine, you can kind of see there's quite a lot of similarities between their design. Um, also, uh, in the games, engine has a, a, flesh, a fleshy cheek here. Um, in this one, it is actually just a metal cheek. And also his fleshy ear has become a, a metal ear. And engine also has about six teeth down there one two three four five and there's six right at the back so he has six teeth as opposed to three um but you can see his fleshy neck there 
Then we get up to the missile, as I've already described. Um, it's not the same as in the game. In the game, obviously, he has three rows of black and yellow check, and um, he also has black and white check here. And the flesh side of his face, Engine's got this big bushy eyebrow. Um, he's also got uh, a nose. He's got a little bump of a nose. It's kind of like one of those uh, upturned pig kind of noses. Uh, so that's giving a little bit more depth here. He's also got this jowl here that hangs around his metal jaw. Kind of creepy. Um, and yeah, he's got a little bit more detail, sort of a crease there where he's frowning. Um, I really love, I really love the face, the face on this figure. I think. Uh, you know, he it kind of captures what Engine is meant to be. I feel like Engine in the latter games became kind of a, like a comic relief character, whereas in the original games he's kind of this creepy cyborg, um, and he's kind of he's kind of scary. Okay, so this huge triangular piece on the back of Engine, I guess we can only call his collar. Um, if they'd followed the Naughty Dog design, I probably would have called it shoulder pads. Um, in the games, obviously, it came out like this and comes back around and and uh you know folds round on his back and there's this like black shadowed piece where his arms uh, sit inside so they went for the, for this design um i'm not too sure why they didn't do the whole thing um but this is what they went for the engine has a lot more studs on his uh on his lab coat than he did in in the in the video games in the in the game, actually, it was it's silver and it's kind of uh, it's kind of ripped and it's silver and it has a black dot in the middle. Whereas these ones, you've got kind of silver and also brass. Now I'm not sure if these are supposed to be shrapnel, rivets, bolts, buttons, studs. I don't know exactly what it's meant to be on engine. Um, from like the production art of engine, it looks like they actually come out of his body in you know through his clothes. So I, I always assumed they were shrapnel. Um, but on this figure, they've actually given him a spine, like a, like a bolt spine down the back. Um, this is kind of a nice detail. I kind of like it. It's kind of creepy, kind of weird. Now, as I said before, his shoulder pads would have covered this up if they, if they went with the Naughty Dog design. But they've added a, a spine in instead, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, then we get to his arms. And uh, there's there's no change here really. The the arms look exactly the same as they did in the game. As you can see, uh, there's some quality control paint here, and also on the other side where obviously uh, they've come down the production line and they've had to uh, paint off pieces that didn't quite get enough enough paint. Articulation wise, it's a ball joint uh, at the top of the arms and then a pivot joint on his hands. But his head is on a 360 pivot joint. You can move that all the way around if you want. Um, so that's about it for articulation of this figure. His legs are absolutely stationary, uh, which is necessary for holding him on his platform here. Now, one issue or something I would rather be done better about this action figure is uh, the way he's standing means that his face is almost entirely obscured. You can't see his face because of his hair. Um, you can only see the metal part of his face, and then he's actually looking down. Um, this is even worse, if you take him off the stand and, and, and you put him down regularly. Now, this is about, say we were eye level with this figure, you can't see his face at all. He's he's just kind of completely staring down at the floor. Which I'm guessing is why they gave him such a huge stand to, 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 to be on. So that, actually, while he's displayed, you can sort of see his face. Um... And it's kind of a shame because it's a really nice figure. It has a lot of detail in the face, and yet we can't see it at all. So I prefer if they designed engine like he is in the games and had his face kind of facing up a bit more so that we can actually see him. Um, the next thing that is kind of annoying is his gun. Uh, it has this huge silver bit on the bottom. It makes it really difficult to put it in his hand. So even now, I've, I squeezed it through his fingers. Uh, the gun is just so loose in his hand. It just doesn't sit firmly at all, even when you, you can try and push the trigger in to his grip, and then it just kind of falls back out. So it's just really loose, kind of pointless. I mean, it's nice that he has this like, extra accessory, but, you know, I, I rarely use it at all. 
So whilst the paint job on all of these figures is really nice and detailed and the colours are really bright and vivid, I feel like the paint almost wasn't meant to survive very long. It was, it, it's not that durable, so I want to try and focus up on Engine's lip here. Um, you can kind of see where the paint uh, on, his, on his lip there is kind of like fading away, crumbling away a little bit. And also on the metallic side of his face, and this is always a problem with any action figure that has metallic paint, um, it starts to kind of crumble and to, to sort of rub off. You can see around his eye there, um, it's kind of crusted up, and on top of his head there, a piece is kind of flaked off. Um, so this is this is one of the issues with the figures. So you have to be really careful in how you handle and how you move these action figures around. So thanks for watching this Crash Bandicoot action figure review of Dr. Engine. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go back to the menu and watch another review.